Hi there guys, uh, Gary here for GenVFX. Today we're talking about the shrink wrap modifier. Now as you can see here, today we've got a shape which is just a pointless silly object that I've just built very quickly out of the default cube because I know I have a habit of getting rid of the default cube and I have heard a couple of people say to me, mm, use it, use it. And I'm like, well, only if I must. I don't need a cube, but I made something from it, so that's fine. So here it is. It's just a little shape. It doesn't actually, it isn't really anything at all. It's just a few extrusions and then um, subdivision and then baked down to a piece of geometry. So the reason why I've used that is because it's got some form and some shape. And the point of the shrink wrap modifier is to allow it to wrap around the surface of an object which you have in there. At the moment, obviously, this has got polygons and arcs and paths and polygons and quads and stuff that actually, you know, very nice shapes and whatever, but they might not be what you actually want for the final result. You might need your... Uh, quads to be going in different paths and different directions and that's where shrink wraps really really useful so i'm going to add in here a mesh i'm going to add had i'm going to add uv sphere and i'm going to increase the segments to 64 and the radius to the rings to 32 so i'm basically doubling it all up which essentially is making it four times as much um it does make sense i promise even though it doesn't sound like it i'm going to go to edit mode and I'm going to make sure I've got everything selected. I'm going to get my cursor near the, near the center and go S and pull that back. And then go into object mode. And if I just very quickly go Alt, Control, and Q, I get a nice little quad view. And I'm just going to go here and to my view, I'm going to open up in quad view. I'm going to open up box, which means that whatever do I do in the orthographic view, it kind of keeps it the same in the other ones. It's really quite good. I really like that. It's just a nice way of controlling things. Let's get rid of that and let's go back to wireframe. So you can see there, this is sitting. I'm gonna move this so it's over the top, roughly of the middle of this object. And we're gonna just basically shrink it down onto the surface. So it's gonna basically pull every single vertice out of this sphere and try and project them in as close a proximity as possible to the original shape of our cube thing. Jumpy, what's it? So let's add a shrink wrap to it and it's set to nearest surface point which it basically means it'll try and get whatever it can project onto the closest point we've got project which actually tries to do it much more it, it, it basically will every single point will head down to the center of the other object try and keep it so they are projecting from their normal directly onto the surface of the other object if you have it just on one side it projects through if you've got them all the way around like this it kind of does a bit more of an accurate kind of like wrap. Um, we've also got nearest vertex, which again is very similar to nearest surface point. It just tries to put things on as close as it can to make it feel correct. And if your object is closer to the surface than this is, there's a lot of points here that are further away. The ones that are further away are less accurate than the ones that are closer. Same as you get with uh, nearest surface point. And then uh, we also there have tangent normal project. And tangent normal project is really, really good because it tries to do the same as nearest surface point, but it's a little bit more accurate. Anyway, let's very, very quickly go into this. Um, so if what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly, I'm just going to go project on surface and I'm going to turn on the target object, which is the cube. And you might see here that nothing has happened. Nothing has happened at all. The reason for that is because the minute it's looking in the positive direction. Now all the positive normals are going outwards, so it needs to be negative. So we're gonna turn off positive and click on negative. And there you can see that's kind of wrapped the object pretty well, actually, if I'm honest. So if I just very quickly put that into a shaded view, you can see where it's having a few problems here, but mostly it's very, very accurate, actually. If I just increase the subdivision levels, it'll also try and tie it up again. It kind of does a force subdivision without actually subdividing the uh, polygon so it kind of does a bit more accurate feel of where it is so if i see if i'm as i move this object around it's still trying to wrap itself directly to it so wherever it can't it it just decides not to so if i pull this away it can't go any further and it starts to reform our sphere it'll do it let's push it up here and there you go like that but it's it's pretty good it's a pretty good way of doing it but that isn't exactly what I want to do. What I want to do is I want to do a force side project of a grid rather than that. So I'm going to delete the object and I'm going to go here. I'm going to add a mesh and I'm going to add a grid and I'm going to set it to three and three. I'm going to set the size to one meter. 
and I'm going to move it out here. I'm going to bring it up and let's rotate it in the Y by 90. Oh, Y90, always useful. Bring this down here like this and I'm going to now go modifier, shrink wrap. I'm going to change that to project and I'm going to take the target and make it cube and set it to negative. So now what's happened is, as you can see, it's projected the object. The object is now just on that side projected as it would be if it was there. So if we go to edit mode, now if I go to three, you can see as I move these points around, very much like the sphere, it's just pushing them around directly on the angle of the surface, which is great. What we can do now is, well, actually what we should be doing now actually very quickly is I'm gonna offset in this a little bit away from the surface. So it's just, it's just proud of the surface of our object so we can see it. So if I was to look a little bit closer, you can see it's just, there you go, it's just, just above our object. It means it's always visible. And I'm also very quickly gonna go here. There we are. And let's put it on random. So we get a slightly different color on our objects to help it make it a bit more visible. So let's control on Q again, put us back into quad view. And I'm going to take this point, I'm gonna move it over here, and that over there, and that over there, that over there. And let's take this and put this one here, and put this one here, this one here, this one here. And then let's move these, let's just rotate these round, and rotate these round. And you can see it's still doing its best to project these onto the surface. Now, one of the reasons why people use shrink wrap is because it's actually particularly good for uh, things like, as I say, you could use it to um, kind of remodel a car based on uh, a shell that you've built, that you've built from a, um, a sculpt. And then you can basically use projection to build on top of the sculpt uh, on one side and work out where your doors are going to go and your windows are going to go. And it's So you can actually do some rapid prototyping with it, which is good. Um, also could use it for clothing and whatnot. It's it's very, very useful. So if I just go in there, let's just pop in another set of vertices there. You see, it gives us a bit more, a bit more there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, go select that polygon and I'm going to, uh, let's just do shift D and shift that up, push that there. So it makes another one. And then I'm gonna go over to my poly build tool and I'm going to pull out a poly there. Let's just move it up a bit. Uh, let's pull out a poly there, move that up, and let's pull out that one there, and move this round, and then pull this down here like this, and pull this round. And I'm just going to very quickly going to go into the tool settings, and I'm going to put on auto merge, and then I'm going to go in here and do this. Let's just make this a little bit more. Uh, uh, uh. To, there we go, so that should go to there, and that should go to there, lovely. So I'm merging those in. I'll do this, I'll do the same thing here, just to give it a bit more, have a little bit of interest. Come on, where are you? No, nope, not that one, I want this one, there you go, and let's pop that there, and that one there. That should be merged, there you go. So we've got some sort of funky sort of shape, which is nice. Go, oh, control Q again. And let's add a subdivision surface and let's put that above our shrink wrap. And I'm gonna add a solidify and let's set that solidify. And that's solidifying inwards because why not? Uh, let's make that minus 0.03. Minus 0.1. There we go. How about that? Now you can see that now. And then let's add another subdivision surface. And then let's make sure the object is shading smooth. And so you've got something which is like, you know, just something you just project on. And if you're like, well, that's good, but I want it on both sides. And it's very, very simple. You just add a mirror modifier. And from there, you select your cube as your base object. And there you go. You know, you can just build away. And you can you know take a polygon and copy it and move it around or you can extrude out uh, using poly build just basically stretch out and add more polygons and you can basically build a whole shape based upon this shape 
but with the topology that you really want. So that's um, a really, really useful use of a uh, shrink wrap. It's great. It's really, really great. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, I hope I've uh, caught you on a good day. And I hope you decide to subscribe. And I hope you decide to carry on liking these and coming back. Anyway, thanks very much for listening. And uh, take care, guys. Bye.